Look what came today. You know what you're thinking, Sandra, it's a box. Well, that's a lot more convenient, isn't it? And look at it, it comes with this cool little remote control. So I could be like across the room and turn my video on and off. Of course, I don't know why I do that, but this is pretty cool. Pretty good value for $25, Amazon. So I'm just going over a blog post that I wrote last year at this time, and it's called Five Things Said in CFL Free Agency. So uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, February 11th, uh, CFL Free Agency opens. So I thought it would be interesting to see where we were a year ago at this time. So number five on my list was the Rough Riders need Willie Jefferson back. So I think this is kind of a cool subject because he is all that's kind of being talked about in CFL free agency in 2020. So in 2018, Willie Jefferson was a Rough Rider and apparently, according to what I wrote, everybody thought that the Rough Riders should sign him and that we needed him on our defense. Of course, that's not what happened. He ended up signing in Winnipeg and um, was obviously on their Grey Cup winning team. So it also worked out though that the Rough Riders really didn't need him. We ended up signing Micah Johnson and um, Charleston Hughes also had a big year. And as we know, in 2020, Charleston Hughes is going to be back with the Rough Riders, although Micah Johnson is a free agent in this season. So it's sort of been said that maybe he'll sign with the BC Lions, but all of that is sort of up in the air until tomorrow when we find out for sure. In 2019, People were saying that Jeremy O'Day wasn't prepared for free agency and a lot of the reason why this was being discussed was because there were a lot of free agent quarterbacks, big name, elite, elite quarterbacks on the market. Um, Bo Levi Mitchell was a free agent, Mike Riley was a free agent, Jonathan Jennings was a free agent and I can't even remember who else anymore. And the Rough Riders didn't sign any of them. We did sign Zach Caleros, and a lot of people sort of moaned about that because we knew that he had concussion issues and injury issues, and we just kind of knew who, how that was going to turn out, right? But Jeremy O'Day did sign Cody Fajardo, and at the time, like this time last year, nobody really knew who Cody Fajardo was. So a lot of fans now think that it was sort of fate that um, Zach Claros ended up being injured in like the third play of the season. In fact, it was a preseason game, wasn't it? I, I don't know. So then in steps Cody Fajardo and the rest is sort of history because he totally evolved over a few games and then of course, you know, the whole corn dog thing happened and the whole um, sprinkles thing happened. And now Cody Fajardo is our number one. So, um, of course, you know, that whole thing went full circle because Zach Claros, uh, the riders traded him to Toronto where he didn't play. So, Basically, Zach Claros didn't play the entire 2019 season. And then in Winnipeg, when Matt Nichols got hurt and um, they decided they needed somebody else, they signed him right at the end of the year and he ended up winning the Grey Cup. You just never know, right? Number three on my list in this blog was that Mosaic Stadium and Regina can no longer attract talent. But I don't think that's really completely what people were getting at. I Part of it is that Regina is small town, right? Saskatchewan is, it you know, of course it's not like Toronto is or Montreal is or even like Calgary is. 
because there's there's things to do in those cities all the time and Regina's just not like that. I don't think that has anything to do with the with Mosaic Stadium. I mean, it's kind of a state of the art type of place. Um, it looks fantastic on TV. I know that everybody that tours Mosaic Stadium is absolutely thrilled with what it looks like. Um, I also think that, you know, people who say Regina can no longer attract talent, maybe aren't watching what's going on all the time. I think this year, the difference here is that it's not that the city or the team or the stadium can't attract talent. I think it's that the Rough Riders are in a position in 2020 to not have to attract a whole lot of talent. Um, really, there are only a few positions that need filling and that's about it. And even in the, the uh, news conference or press or whatever you wanna call it, it was held this morning, Monday, um, Jeremy O'Day said that they weren't going to be that active in free agency. So, you know, I guess we can say that the team is probably where they want to be for the 2020 season. Number two on my list was the Rough Riders failed to sign a quarterback. And I already kind of touched on that. And they did kind of fail to sign a quarterback because we had sort of believed that you know, what the media said was true and that we needed a big name. Did we though? You know, we sort of made a big name out of the guy that we had, didn't we? Because he just emerged as in sort of this larger than life personality. And he, Cody Fajardo just has the personality that attracts us all. He, he played injured last year a, for a lot of the time and we didn't even know it and we just saw him you know take charge sometimes when nobody else would and there was just so many reasons to like the guy so now obviously that's not a need in 2020 what are the Rough Riders needs in 2020 a lot of players have already been signed and um, except with, you know, a, fr a few positions on the offensive line or defensive line or even a uh, linebacker, I think the team is pretty well set. And there's a lot of things that can happen between now and the beginning of the season. First of all, there's always new guys that come into camp. We don't even know who they are. And then we see them play and it's like, oh my God, that's the guy. So, you know, we can't fully realize what this team is going to look like just yet until we see them in preseason, maybe. The number one thing that I talked about in this blog was that the role that social media plays in some of these things. So my line was, the sky is falling. Well, you know what? In Rider Nation, the sky is always falling because there's always something and everybody always jumps to conclusions of some sort. So take this into account. So on Friday, Charleston Hughes announced at the Kinsman dinner in Saskatoon that he is in fact a Rough Rider this year. And everybody was like, woohoo, and it was all over the place. Then on um, Saturday, on Twitter, he posted that he had some big news to announce. And suddenly, everybody's coming out of the woodwork, speculating what's going on. Some people are saying he's retiring. Some people say he's signed. It's like, weren't you paying attention on Friday? No, I guess not. And then the thing was, weren't you paying attention a month ago? Because a month ago, the writers said they had extended his contract for a year. So... You know, what's the big news? So I think the, the thing that is different here is that 
there there are different kinds of fans and of course there should be right um there's the fan where the writers are the only team that they follow and they don't maybe follow the news from all over the place which is one of the things that i love about abc writer fans is that we don't totally stick to just rider news. We try to share a little bit of what's going on with everybody until the regular season starts. But if the Rough Riders are the only team that you follow, the only CFL team that, that you identify with, then of course, when a little tiny snippet of something is on social media, you're probably going to be the one freaking out or the one asking what's going on. Sometimes those people overreact to everything that gets posted everywhere. You know, there's um, Twitter fights and Facebook fights and all kinds of ridiculous things that go on. <sighs> you know, it's just frustrating because you can't just go and say something anymore. Social media is great because it gives everybody a voice but it's also really awful because it gives everybody a voice. So the other type of fan is the Rough Riders are your main team, but you follow the CFL as a whole. And maybe you consider yourself a CFL fan or part of the CFL family. So you know that football is a lucrative business and you know there are hard choices and the player's personality is not put above everything else. The team is what is above everything else. So you wish ex-players good luck with their new teams. You're happy when new players are brought in. You're looking forward to the season and to the next thing that, that comes along. So the important thing is, and this is what I stated in my blog, is which type of fan are you? Which one do you want to be? So Rider Nation is usually known for being passionate and over the top. And we get a really bad name with every other type of fan because of that. You know, I don't want to be the one that's laughed at. Here I am putting myself out there, right? And even somebody criticized me for that last week. They, you know, I'm not going to go into it. But anyway, you know, players want to be on our team because we are that passionate. But... Any fan can be a better type of fan, right? So let's make that choice. And that's what the whole point of my blog really was about, was about just being better. So that's a little rundown about what was said last year. And uh, you can check back and I think I'll probably do a follow up to find out how everything panned out in free agency. So you can check back on all the different places that where I am. So there's the ABC football blog um, on smilingwriterfan.blogspot.com. You can go on Facebook to ABC football to the page and you'll get my latest posts there. You can join ABC Rider Fans Facebook group. You'll get all you need to know there. Um, I'm on Twitter as uh, Smiling Sandra, and I'm also on Instagram at um, Smiling Rider Fan there. And of course, now here I am on YouTube. So don't forget, you know, all the YouTubers say this, like and subscribe. If you like the video, that kind of helps me out a little bit. Um, it would be wonderful if you shared it with your friends because don't we just all want to be more in the know? So thanks for watching. I'll see you after free agency.